Hello again, uh, and uh, welcome to uh, today's webinar with Child Family Health International. Uh, my name is Keaton Andrews. I'm the Assistant Director of Outreach uh, here uh, in our San Francisco office. And I get to do something today that uh, is fairly unique uh, for an organization that is uh, 25 years old. And I get to uh, officially announce uh, in a public setting that we're doing something for the first time in our history. Uh, and that is offer two week programs uh, in August. So we're excited uh, to share with you the details of how that is going to work. Uh, and we're excited to share with you all of our uh, two week intensive programs, uh, which we will be going over on this webinar today. So welcome to the call, buckle in and uh, we'll get, get going on our way. So as I said, uh, my name is Keaton Andrews. Uh, I'm the CFHI Assistant Director of Outreach, and I'm joined today by Robin Young, um, which I'll uh, have her introduce herself. Thanks, Keaton. Hi, I'm Robin. I'm the Director of Programs here at CFHI, and really excited to share with you about our two-week intensives in August today. And we're also joined by one of our uh, alumni, uh, from one of our Uganda programs uh, that was of uh, two weeks. Uh, she, she just went on the program earlier uh, this past winter. Um, Michaela, if you could say hi. Hello. And uh, so you can oh, see... Hi. Oh, go ahead, Michaela. No, that's okay. I'm an undergraduate at the University of Minnesota Rochester and really happy to be here. And thank you for being on the call. So you can see here uh, that Child Family Health International over the past 25 years has grown uh, to 10 different countries. We have nearly uh, almost 40 different program locations at this point. Uh, and we're always trying to find new ways uh, and new innovative ways to bring our uh, global health education programs uh, to individuals who are looking for uh, an experience to let the world change them. Uh, and so part of that uh, is now that we're now introducing these August intensives and you can see uh, the full context of, of where those sit uh, in terms of uh, our full breadth of, of program options. Uh, so, uh, but even before that, setting the stage for the field with which we work in, and that is the field of global health, uh, you kind of have to understand what, what is global health first and foremost. And, I always like to show these two definitions side by side uh, when doing these webinars because it gives a, a really stark contrast and, and shows the reality of, of what happens during global health study. And that is the fact that uh, as uh, students entering into uh, a health context, a health system that is unfamiliar, that you're actually joining in with the local story that has uh, gone on for um, you know several years before your arrival and will continue to happen after you leave. So you're entering into this health story for um, two weeks in, in the case of our uh, intensives. Uh, and uh, you're entering into uh, different sites, different sounds, and you're coming from a, a different perspective. So, you know, looking at these two definitions, you have the more academic definition at, at the top, which carefully uh, describes global health in its academic study. And then you have the definition at the bottom, which describes uh, global health as a fabricated concept uh, of what happens regularly uh, in developing nations and, and, and its attempt uh, of developed countries just to explain what's happening. So um, I think it's interesting that when you have, you know, interactions between you know, global north, global south, like there are a lot, there's a lot going on um, that you may not uh, even see. Uh, and that is why at Child Family Health International, we always uh, lead uh, very detailed pre-departure training and we prepare you to enter into a different culture for the short period of time uh, that you'll be uh, journeying with us. So a little bit more context about who we are. As I said uh, on the title slide, we are now 25 years old, being founded in 1992. Uh, we have grown uh, to nearly 40 different program sites in 10 different countries. Um, we have sent 
over 9,000 students on, on these programs uh, with over 200 global partners uh, and uh, locations in, in healthcare settings, uh, as you can see, uh, 75 different partner clinics and hospitals. And we're proud to call ourselves uh, in special consultative status with the United Nations Economic and Social Council. So our programs are great for anybody uh, that are interested in global health. And on this webinar in particular, we're focusing on our two-week programs, uh, particularly the ones that we're offering in August. Uh, and then we have a few more options in the winter as well. Uh, I will point out that in addition to these programs, uh, our, our normal length is four weeks, uh, four to 16 weeks. And so uh, our entire menu of program options are available at the, the length of four weeks. So we always direct uh, people interested in our programs to ask themselves a series of questions before they decide uh, you know, what program is right for them. And, and we do this because we care a lot about uh, student safety. We also care a lot about patient safety. And we realize that the uh, arena of study abroad and education abroad is rife with hundreds and hundreds of organizations, many of which um, are concerned most with profit. Uh, we here at Child Family Health International like care most about um, both uh, you know, our partnerships with uh, the health systems in the countries that uh, we're located in and also uh, the patient safety and student safety uh, of all involved. So these series of questions are help, uh, designed to help you uh, ask critical questions about the experiences you're exploring. So our approach to our programs is an assets-based approach, which means that we're going to emphasize the health systems and assets available. Uh, we're not walking into these locations saying, oh, I see that you don't have this, you don't have this, you don't have this, so we're going we're gonna to raise money, we're going to give it to you. And uh, that's not how it works. Like We lift up local practitioners as the experts of their own environment, uh, and we're going to focus on the strengths and positive efforts within those communities and instruct our uh, students that uh, are on the programs to do the same. So for your CFHI experience, uh, you can trust us to be socially responsible and financially just. Uh, you're going to have a chance to build your professional experience in global health, uh, and you should expect a community uh, immersion living experience with a host family uh, on most of our programs. And we have somebody on the call on the webinar today that's able to speak to, to these details. So uh, Michaela, if you could uh, come forward now. Here I am. Yeah, I'm ready. yeah, yeah. So I, I was just wondering uh, for you, uh, Michaela, first of all, uh, what would you say stood out to you the most uh, in your two weeks uh, in Uganda? Um, I would say the relationships that I built with everyone and just being able to explore um, not only their health system, but I guess dive deeper into their health system and see, you know, um, where they're getting their nutrition from and um, just how they work as a country as a whole. Um, and I just met some of the greatest people over there that I'm still in contact with. Um, yeah. I think another question I'd like to ask is, what is one preconceived notion that you had before you left that is now changed uh, after your return? Yes. In general, um, when I was preparing to go, everyone was like, oh, go save the world, go do these things. And I knew that I wasn't going to go do something. I was going to experience you know, what they do. And um, I sat on the plane and I was like on my way there. I didn't know why I was going. Like I had this little, you know, detrimental life um, question in my head, like why was I truly going? And I reflected on that a week later into my program and realized truly why I was there to, you know, open my eyes to new experiences and really be accepting and learn that the people there didn't need my help. I wasn't this great American that could save the world. Rather, I could be there and support them and um, just learn from them. They had so much to teach me. And um, I guess learning that 
as an American, yes, we have a lot of resources, but also um, the ways in which other countries do it are just as good. Wow, yeah, that's uh, that's a profound reflection. Uh, what value would you place on on being able to go through the process of of reflecting on on that? Yeah, um, I guess as a future healthcare professional, um, it is really important for one to be able to, you know, obviously see that there are differences and work with those differences and, you know, not trump one over the other. Um, and so I really think that this experience and kind of like life altering um, condeception, it was uh, really great for me to grow as a person, but also as a health professional, I think was um, really important to me. Well, very cool. Um, definitely. And is there any other um, detail or experience that you'd like to, to share with the audience today before we, we move uh, to the rest of the webinar? Yeah, sure. I think that uh, as I talk to other students around um, that are interested in CFHI, they're very nervous about going alone and whatnot. And I always say that you learn the most when you're in the most uncomfortable situations. And I was super nervous. I was flying to Uganda by myself uh, over winter break. And I mean, as a 19 year old, that's a big deal. And um, I realized that when I got there, there was nothing to be concerned about. I felt safe the entire time. I knew I had contacts. I had my CFHI coordinator in Uganda who was everything um, and amazing and supported us through the whole thing. He continues to keep in touch with us and really wanted us to develop as an individual. And they wanted to make sure that we got the best experience possible. They were willing to alter everything um, to meet our needs and interests, which was really great. So if you're nervous about going alone, I would say the first you know, the plane ride there is a little scary, but once you get there, you will not have that fear anymore. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Michaela. I think that's a good word. Mm -hmm. um, and I know uh, from re recent events that I've been to that, um, you know, interested students really value the, the experience of our alumni. So thank you for sharing. No problem. So, um, a few details came out in what uh, Michaela just said, but uh, Robin, if you could uh, speak uh, to some of the logistical details of how uh, what students should expect from their program. Of course, thanks so much. And Michaela, thank you for that beautiful reflection. Um, I don't think that any of us here on staff could have better articulated what we hope students will gain from our program. So thank you so much, um, that was lovely. So um, what to expect from your CFHI program? Um, you will have access to a suite of pre-departure preparation and support. We partner with, a, um, with Om Prakash. Uh, their EDGE platform offers a wonderful vehicle for all of your pre-departure orientation. Um, so that includes several different readers and some interactive modules, which are gonna help you prepare in various ways, thinking about your role in the clinical setting, uh, engaging in some intercultural learning, and also just having access to um, logistical information um, and literature related to the health topic of your program. So that's a really key piece of what's included in your program. You'll be met at the airport, um, picked up and brought to whatever your lodging is. Um, you'll receive a pretty robust orientation on site that will cover what to expect in the month. You'll get your schedule. You'll learn about safety on site um, and just get to know your local team. You'll be issued a local cell phone, um, and this is uh, just, just an emergency backup, but it's nice to have that local number. Um, your accommodations will look like either guest houses, we have one or two apartment uh, based programs for lodging and many home stays um, for several of our programs. Meals, depending on the program, two to three meals per day are included. We organize all of your clinical and public health experiences as well as the cadre of preceptors or mentors um, that will be supervising you and supporting you Monday through Friday during your rotations or service learning or whatever the content of the program is. Um, you'll receive weekly lectures from your local team. And if you're in a Latin America program, you'll have um, 
uh, several contact hours of Spanish. Depending on the program, it varies a little bit how many. Um, local transportation is very often included in the programs. Again, it varies a little bit, but the key thing to note here is that um, we've based the type of transportation that's included on what's best for the setting. So um, if it's ideal and safe for you to be using public transport, then we orient you to how to do that and we set you up to succeed with that. And then that's how you get to your experience, your internship or your rotation each day. Um, if it's the type of place where it's a better idea for you to be uh, actually driven with a driver to and from your rotations, then that's what we do. Um, so rest assured that we've, we've based that decision on the setting. We do automatically enroll you in 24 hour medical uh, and evacuation insurance. So this is through a third party insurance provider. It's in addition to your primary insurance. So you don't wanna pause your primary insurance, but this is a travel insurance um, and it's gonna be a safety net for you in case of any medical emergency or incident, which of course we hope doesn't happen. And then our staff here in San Francisco, in addition to your local team, of course, we work as a team to provide 24 seven emergency support. And so that includes a 24 hour emergency line here in San Francisco that we answer around the clock and collaborate um, with your local team, as well as any other stakeholders in the case of an incident or an emergency. So I'll just um, briefly introduce sort of the structure of our in-country programs and, and the structure revolves around our partners. So at each program, we have a medical director and this is the person who puts together your schedule, uh, provides training and stays in close contact with our preceptors and mentors that are actually um, supervising you and working with you on a daily basis in the clinical setting or in the public health setting. Some of our uh, countries where we have many programs have a country director. So this is the case with India. Here you see Mrs. Hema Pandey, who's our program, our country director in India. Um, she's wonderful and does an unbelievable job of maintaining and supporting the eight programs. So if you're thinking about a four-week program, we run eight programs in India. And today, uh, talking about the two-week intensives, we'll focus on Delhi in just a minute. Um, we have a local coordinator at each one of our programs. So this is the person who you go to if you're confused about transport or um, you disclose that you have an allergy in your pre-departure forms um, and you just wanna make sure that your host family understands the allergy well. Uh, you know, you're coordinating your airport drop off at the end of the program. So your local coordinator is really your logistics go-to and they're also a little bit of a cultural liaison um, the medical director and country director can serve those roles as well. So if you're just not sure about an interaction you had or you have some questions about culture or communication, um, your whole team is really going to be a great resource for you. And then, of course, uh, some of the people that you'll be interacting with the most are your preceptors um, or mentors in a more public health setting. So um, in some of our programs, you'll be actually rotating with the same preceptor during your whole program. And then in other programs, you'll be under different preceptorship day to day in some cases or week to week. So students often ask us, what's a typical day look like on a CFHI program? Um, and I guess the really, really short answer is that um, no program is exactly alike. So keep that in mind. This is just a really broad strokes overview, um, but you can really expect four to six hours of clinical rotations or public health experiences. Um, that can look different ways for different programs. So sometimes that means that you've got a really early morning, you do your rotation from eight through after lunchtime, and then you've got your afternoons free, or if you're in Latin America, maybe you have your Spanish classes in the afternoon. Um, in other programs, it may look like you have a morning rotation and then a long break for lunch and maybe a nap or some exploring. And then you have an early evening rotation as well. So it can vary quite a bit, um, but the, the key thing is that you'll be spending four to six or in some cases even a few more hours than that uh, per day doing your the content of your program. Uh, again, in Latin America, usually language classes take place in the afternoon. Once per week, you'll have that lecture I mentioned, which is often 
combined with a reflection and check-in meeting with your local coordinator. Um, and then your weekends typically are free. Um, so if you know that you're going to a location where, uh, you know, for a two-week intensive, you're just going to have that, that one weekend in between your two weeks, um, go ahead and start thinking about how you might best use that. Is there anything nearby that you really wouldn't want to miss? Um, you can do a little bit of um, sightseeing during that, your weekends. So CFHI programs are competency-based, um, and I just wanted to share some of our global competencies. So these apply to all of our programs. And then, of course, there are program-specific competencies because, as you all know by now, our programs vary in health topic and focus um, substantially. Um, but these are some of the competencies that tie all of our programs together, and this just means that upon completion of one of our programs, we expect that you will have really deepened your understanding in these ways um, and be able to do the following. Um, with respect to patients and populations, uh, you'll be able to articulate the relationship between health and the social determinants of health. This is a huge theme that really runs through all of our programs. So social determinants of health, thinking about things like uh, access to nutritious food, access to clean water, um, you know, th just thinking about those upstream factors that can really help determine outcomes. Um, you'll be able to demonstrate an understanding of cultural and ethical issues, working and learning within the context of underserved populations, demonstrating an understanding of the barriers to health, as well as healthcare delivery strategies and systems in low resource settings and how these influence access to care. Um, and as Michaela said earlier, you know, we're not uh, inserting you into these health systems as saviors or even really volunteers. Um, really, you're being inserted into existing healthcare systems because you're learning, um, learning from local expertise about healthcare delivery strategies in low resource settings. So you're looking around and saying, wow, I'm, I'm learning from these local experts, these local practitioners about the um, really uh, creative ways that they are addressing um, healthcare delivery in this in this existing low resource setting. So key to make that differentiation, I think. Um, number four, demonstrate a commitment to professional behavior while working collaborati collaboratively with healthcare team members, being respectful of differences in knowledge, practices, and culture. This is going to come up so much during your program. You'll have the opportunity to see things that maybe you don't understand or you don't agree with and how you react to those, how you handle that is really going to be what helps determine if, if you're developing that commitment to professional behavior. So are you confronting that person and questioning them publicly about their medical choices or are you thinking, uh, challenging yourself to think about a more um, sensitive uh, and culturally informed response? and identifying the major causes of morbidity and mortality affecting the populations encountered during your global health education program. During clinical rotations, um, as I said, whether it's on a given day or maybe a given week or maybe your whole program, you'll be assigned to a specific preceptor. We keep the preceptor to student ratio really low. That's both for your own learning as well as um, out of respect for the patient and recognizing the, um, the work that preceptorship it is for our preceptors. Um, you know, it, it's a teaching opportunity for them uh, and it does take devoted energy and work. So recognizing that we want to be respectful of, of that is really important. So we try and keep that ratio low. So what types of things might you be able to do? Well, first of all, it's important to note that that's, that depends on your level um, and your educational background. Um, but you can be looking to do things such as uh, community-oriented primary care. So in many cases, this is going to be a shadowing or an observational opportunity in the clinical setting. Um, and that's because that's an ethical best practice. There's a really robust body of literature supporting this. Um, you may be able to support things like patient histories, non-invasive non -invasive physical exams, discussing differential diagnosis, and discussion of treatment plan. Of course, the local provider will be the person actually making diagnosis and treatment. Um, you may be able to help replicate those things um, and engaging in hospital rounds and on-site lectures. Um, 
in many of the places where we work, you will be placed in teaching settings, teaching hospitals. So you may be working and learning alongside local students too, which is of course an added bonus. Um, many of the programs, whether they're publicly health focused or not, do incorporate that component. So things like malaria and dengue brigades or vaccination campaigns. But I will point out that um, CFHI students are not invited to engage in invasive procedures, uh, no matter what their level. And again, this is just to prioritize patient safety in all settings, recognizing that um, even a licensed US doctor who's been practicing for many years, it is not the best use of their skills to go and engage in a bunch of hands-on intensive medical care. Um, rather, for our more advanced students, we would want to talk to you beforehand and think about ways that we might engage you in bi-directional capacity building, maybe some training, maybe some continuous quality improvement of programming. Um, and that's really just based on, again, prioritizing patient safety in a, in a situation where we are not the experts in the culture. Um, you know, the practice of medicine in the U.S. is so different than the practice of medicine uh, in many of the places where we work. So. We really just want to do uh, make decisions that prioritize patient safety, prioritize your own safety, and also utilize the unique skills and expertise that you're bringing to the table to help support our partners. Um, sort of in return for all the work that they're doing to uh, engage in this this wonderful teaching that they do. Um, so I, I would um, caution that going into a CFHI program, you you won't be doing things like suturing or um, actually administering vaccines, et cetera. On-site lectures, um, these can look different ways. Sometimes they're more formal in a classroom setting. Sometimes they take place in a more informal setting, sort of sitting around at dinner and having your medical director spend an hour with you just to discuss cases or have the opportunity to ask questions. Um, but you can expect to learn a lot about the local healthcare system, cultural geographic influence on healthcare access, common local diseases and treatment, and topics related to program emphasis. I'm going to turn it back over to Keaton here for a moment, just so he can tell you a little bit more about how to fund your program. Yeah. Uh... Thank you, Robin. And uh, we have several ways in which CFHI can help you fund uh, your global health education experience uh, through us. So uh, we do have several scholarships available. Unfortunately, these are for part, uh, partial funding, uh, but we do everything we can to award as many scholarships as possible during the year. Uh, right now, the deadlines are actually today uh, for our fall scholarships. Uh, and you can see the full breadth of options that we have currently available on our website uh, at cophi.org backslash uh, scholarships. The URL is on the next page. Uh, but once those go along, uh, we have in the past done um, uh, scholarships to our winter uh, intensives, uh, and uh, more info will be available on that one way or the other within uh, by the end of July, or perhaps uh, certainly by early August. So keep checking back. We always have new scholarship opportunities. We always have new ways of which we're pursuing uh, our students uh, and and getting them funded. Uh, and one thing that we do as well to really support uh, our students getting funded for their programs is we give them access to an online crowdfunding platform as soon as they're accepted. Uh, and we're typically seeing that more and more participants are able to raise their entire program fee through this method. Uh, so we do everything we can uh, to support uh, funding your program. Uh, and uh, here on the next slide, uh, here is where you go to see the scholarships uh, and what you'll see is the list of active scholarships, the list of awards that we offer throughout the year. Uh, there are always new ones that we're creating. As I said, we're always thinking of creative ways to engage our students with funding opportunities uh, and uh, all the eligibility requirements uh, that you need uh, to know uh, to apply. Uh, but if you have any questions at all, uh, reach out to me. Uh, my email is uh, k-e-a-t-o-n at cfhi.org. And Great. So I think I'm going to take back over here and I'm just going to give you a little bit of an overview to um, these really exciting two week intensives that we for the first time, as Keaton said, are offering in August. Um, so this is a really 
wonderful opportunity that our partners in three of our um, partner programs have made available to you. Um, so just to give an overview, um, we're offering our program in Argentina as a two-week intensive in August. This is our Hospital Medicine Latin America program. In Mexico, coastal Mexico, we're offering our Tropical Medicine and Community Health program for, for the first time in August as a two-week intensive. It takes place in Puerto Escondido in Oaxaca State. And in India, we're offering our Public Health and Community Medicine two-week intensive in August. It takes place in Delhi. In Argentina, um, you can expect clinical rotations at some of the oldest and most renowned teaching hospitals in Córdoba. Um, so look up Córdoba. You may not have heard of it, but it's a really beautiful old city. Um, feels really modern and cosmopolitan. You'll stay with local host families. You'll be able to walk many of the places that you want to go. Um, the language school is centrally located, so it's a really beautiful um, a uh, really beautiful, engaging opportunity in a pretty sort of unique setting. Um, you'll complete daily rounds alongside local healthcare professionals. The types of things that you might be able to do are focused on physical exams, supporting the local team. Um, you'll see treatment of infectious disease in particular, learn about uh, treatment of HIV AIDS um, and management of HIV AIDS in this particular setting observing surgical care, oncology, dermatology, pediatrics, um, or psychology wards. So this is one where when you're filling out your application, once you're accepted in stage two, you'll wanna be sure to let us know about uh, the areas of hospital medicine that interest you um, because we do have these really wonderful connections at the hospitals where the program takes place and you'll have the opportunity to focus in a little bit uh, based on your interests. In Mexico, as I said, our tropical medicine program takes place uh, in Puerto Escondido. It's a coastal town. Um, you may, if you're a surfer, you may have heard of it. It's a well-known surfing town, but uh, behind the scenes and away from the tourism, there's a really robust community-based primary care um, offering taking place. So that our partners are really rooted in this primary care sort of world and, um, will help you gain access and rotate at a variety of small community-based primary care centers, um, learning about how care differs between the low income and the high income populations in Puerto. So there's some comparison uh, and some of the lectures will focus on, on um, those dichotomies. Um, so again, you'll, you'll be placed at the Centro de Salud. Uh, you will have the opportunity to visit a secondary level hospital. And then um, there'll likely also be some focus on uh, vector-borne illnesses. So um, diseases transmitted by mosquito. And uh, if it's running during the time of year while you're there in August, um, you may also have the opportunity to even engage in some more brigade or outreach style work related to vector-borne diseases. In India, our public health and community medicine program offers you the opportunity to um, spend two weeks in Delhi, uh, a really complex, enormous, beautiful city that continues to face the challenges of poverty, malnutrition, um, issues focused around human rights, both triumphs and challenges. Um, difficulty and inadequate access to health care for much of the population. Um, you'll come to understand through lectures uh, as well as exposure to the various nonprofit and NGOs that we partner with in Delhi, the lingering impact of India's caste system and challenges implementing public health initiatives within this extraordinarily diverse um, population. So the types of NGOs that you'll be able to spend time at focus on a diverse array of initiatives from um, addressing uh, the spread of HIV through community health education and theater initiatives among different populations, including um, long haul truckers. Um, you'll observe a needle exchange and methadone clinic. Um, for people who are uh, attempting to um, 
become attempted to stop being addicted to heroin. And this is, of course, a harm reduction initiative, a public health initiative focused as well on HIV AIDS. Um, you'll look at an organization and spend time at an organization that has really done groundbreaking work um, addressing uh, scavenging as a livelihood. So women who previously were removing human waste from households where there were no toilets. Um, this organization has now uh, provided both vocational training for those women to provide them with alternate alternatives, as well as um, help to implement low cost composting toilets in certain communities. So uh, really inspiring work in a few communities, they've managed to eradicate scavenging altogether, um, which of course really elevates the quality of life for the women in question and increases sanitation and hygiene, uh, which causes a reduction in diarrheal diseases and, you know, um, uh, illness in children under five, et cetera, et cetera, in those communities. So um, really inspiring work and you'll have the opportunity to um, observe, do site visits, uh, do some longer placements at a few of the NGOs and um, really have some big takeaways in terms of bigger picture public health initiatives in, in Delhi. So deadlines for the August intensives, um, we'd really like you to be signed up um, ideally three months before the program starts, but you know what, you're not too late for any of this. So um, go ahead, if you're interested in participating for an August 5th program, you've still got time. Um, we'd like to have you join us and get into our system, uh, complete your application before June 22nd. Um, and then if you're looking for the mid-August start date, which is an August 19th start date, uh, go ahead and make sure that you're signed up with us. So start your application soon and make sure you complete it before or July 5th. Um, if at the last minute you realize, oh wow, the program, you know, August 19th is only a month away, but I feel like I'm going to have time. I, something shifted in my schedule and I can make it work. Um, just reach out to us. Sometimes we can accommodate things a little closer to the deadline, but go ahead and try and meet these application deadlines so that we can assure you a spot in these programs. I did want to point out that we offer our two-week intensives in winter. In fact, traditionally, that was the only time that we offered our two-week intensive. So as, as Keaton pointed out earlier, the August offering is a really new and exciting development. Um, but make sure that you check out our two-week intensive programs page. If August isn't going to work out so well for you, but you know that you have two weeks to spare during your winter break, maybe this is a good one to check out. And important to note that there are a couple programs offered in the winter that are not offered in August, specifically uh, a program in Oaxaca City focused on health access and inequities, and the program that Michaela did in Uganda, which is our Maternal Child Health HIV and Realities of Health Access program. What to expect from the application process? I promise it's relatively painless. There's a $95 application fee. You answer three short questions. Um, we'll ask for, actually it's one academic professional reference. If you're doing a, a Latin America program, there's a Spanish self-evaluation. You're gonna hear back from us really quickly because we um, run programs on a monthly role rolling basis. We also process acceptances on a rolling basis. So you should hear back from us within about a week. We have a high acceptance rate. What we're looking for really is alignment with our vision and values in terms of how we approach the practice of global health. Um, so uh, if we have questions about, um, you know, if you're looking for that really more brigade style, hands-on medically intensive experience, clinically intensive experience, where you're just gaining a ton of hands-on medical experience, um, we won't necessarily reject you, but we'll probably reach out to you just to chat about that um, and just see if we can get a little bit more on the same page about the type of global health that we're engaging in. Um, but like I said, we have a really high acceptance rate because we find that um, those of you who apply to our programs are really excited about partnering and learning from local experts and sharing your skills and knowledge with our partners in all of the places where we work. What can you expect to gain from a CFHI program? Um, 
Well, I already mentioned the competencies that you'll build in global health. Um, building relationships with local communities, as was mentioned earlier, these are relationships that you're gonna maintain for a long time um, because you're in this new setting and you're so supported and cared for and you're learning so much. Uh, so those become fast friendships with your local team as well as your other um, the other participants in the program. You'll build your experience in clinical and public health settings, build your language skills, um, and really build your career and your personal development as well. So CFHI partners are excited to welcome you. Um, please don't hesitate to reach out with any questions and thanks so much for listening today and I'll turn it back over to Keaton now. Thank you, Robin. I'll just leave you with this quote uh, from one of the CFHI students uh, who's a fourth year medical student. Uh, participating in this program through CFHI was truly an exceptional experience traveling abroad as a medical student is a once in a lifetime opportunity, I think it should be a part of every student's education. Uh, so if you have any questions, uh, if you could type it into uh, the question box on your webinar panel, um, we're happy to answer any questions at this time. And uh, Michaela, did you have anything else to add uh, before the webinar ends today? Um, I don't think so, but I just want to offer it up if anyone has questions more specific to the student or their experience, I'm more than welcome um, to have my email be shared and would love to um, provide more information to people as a student if needed. Well, uh, thank you for that very kind offer, Michaela. I know that uh, Robin and I will certainly take you up on that at some point, I'm sure. Um, as we Thank do. you, and maybe... Yep. Sorry to interrupt, but maybe, um, Michaela, if you're willing, we could include that when we send out this recording to participants afterward. And that way, if they have questions about CFHI or questions about Uganda in particular, they can reach out to you. Yes, please. That's perfect. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Um, and I don't see any questions, so uh, I think we'll... Uh, send you on your way uh, to have a wonderful weekend. Uh, thank you again, uh, Michaela, for being on the call. Thank you, Robin, uh, for your expertise. Uh, and we are really excited to present these intensives. Uh, so hopefully uh, we'll see you uh, on one of our programs soon. Uh, and again, as I said uh, just a second ago, have a wonderful weekend and, um, and a good day. Thanks, everyone. Bye.